Hey guys, welcome to another edition of F1 Podcast. This time it's episode 133. And Max, there is so much to look forward to in the next few weeks leading up to the season. We're counting down, Pep. How are you feeling about this build-up, mate? We've oh, got it's... car launches, we've got testing. It's killing me. Drivers still to be confirmed. Oh, it's been the longest off-season ever. But mind you, I always say that at the beginning of every uh, season anyway. But uh, this is a killer because we've got uh, the shoe coming back, Pep. Um, but we have had some uh, some recent driver announcements, uh, as as you mentioned, and uh, and some car launch uh, dates coming up. So yes. it's all, uh, all, all go. Yeah, I can't remember looking for. I always say this, Max, but I can't remember the last time I looked forward to a season so much. I think you know. <laughs> you say that every year. I do. Like I do. <laughs> I do. But this year we've got Michael Schumacher. We've got four new teams. We've got regulation changes. Hey, USF, on hurry up and sign Jacques Villeneuve, please. All right, <laughs> and we get our five on the group. <laughs> All right, Max, let's start this video off talking about those drivers that have been confirmed since we last filmed. And uh, the one most recently has been Nick Heidfeld, who's been confirmed as the Mercedes test driver, reserve driver. Mate, it's a sad note that we start on. It is. Um, I've always been a big fan of, uh, of Quick Nick. I think he's a bit of an underrated driver uh, and has only been held back by some of the cars that he's, uh, he's driven. Um, and yeah, as you say, he becomes uh, a uh, reserve and, uh, and test driver for the German super team. Hmm. Uh, I'm sad to, to see Nick um, um, leaving um, the, the Grand Prix circus, uh, per se. Yeah, Max, I'm with you. I look at the drivers who are confirmed on the grid now, and I think, you know, why does Nick Heidfeld not have a confirmed seat. I mean, the guy has shown pace, he's got lots of experience, mm. and I know some of you guys are big Nick <clears throat> Heidfeld fans. We often get mm. comments from you guys about how good Nick is, and um, I'm disappointed as well, Max. I just think the guy deserves to be on the grid. I mean, we've got an extended grid this year, and there's no room for Nick Heidfeld. I mean, he's a reserve driver, he's a test driver. I can't believe it. I, I was disappointed. Why didn't you go to Renault with Kibitza? Yeah, why, why, exactly. Why not? Why didn't someone else sign him up, one of the new teams, hmm. even? Um, I'm just really surprised. And uh, now we've got a German team with a German a reserve driver. And uh, e even McLaren Max has got Gary Paffett as their hmm. reserve driver. So they've got a, an all-British uh, teammate. And, um, you know, I, I just think Nick deserves better, honestly. I think so. So we've got a, uh, a German super team who'll be eating sauerkraut uh, in the paddock, and mm. we've got a British super team who'll be eating pork scratchings uh, in their <laughs> part of the paddock. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very sad to see Nick leave, and uh, as Pep uh, quite rightly said, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you are as well. But it's good that he's still in the fold of Formula 1. It's just a pity that we, uh, we won't see him lining up on the, uh, on the grid in 2010. All right, Max, well, we've got a driver confirmation tomorrow. It's not official official, but it's looking very much likely that uh, Jose Maria Lopez, the Argentinian driver... Nice pronunciation. Thank you, Max. Jose Maria Lopez. Mate, he's continuing does look a on. Star. He, he does, actually. And a uh, proud tradition of, of Argentinian drivers. It's, it's been a while, Max. Um, yes. I was looking up today, there was Gaston Mazzacane. Oh, what a, what a powerhouse of a yeah. driver Gaston was. Better. Totally underrated. Esteban Tuero was another oh, one. Another one? Yeah. Oh. But of course, you go way back when and you get uh, Fangio, who's a classic of uh, you know Argentinian. The only good one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and this goes back to my Heidfeld comment. I mean, you've got people like Lopez who look like they're signing. Um, probably by the time you watch this video, he'll be confirmed. Is he bringing any cash-ish to the uh, table? Yeah, pack? a lot, yeah. Peter Windsor, who always said that uh, paid drivers were, you know, not what you wanted in Formula 1, and now he's actually running a Formula 1 team, and he's decided, <laughs> oh, right, okay, yeah, we'll take 8 million US dollars. His tune's changed a little bit, hasn't it? Pat? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> the rumour is that Lopez is bringing 8 million US dollars to the team um, in order to secure that seat, and, uh, you know, I, I googled the guy, I looked him up, and, uh, you know, I don't know what to say, mate. I, you know, he's come out of the woodwork, as far as I can see, uh, to get this drive, and uh, we'll see what happens with him, mate. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, Peter Windsor and Kenny Anderson have seen, have, have shown a lot of faith in uh, in the young Argentinian, um, and they wouldn't have chosen him if he was uh, a bit of a dud. But I, yeah, it's a bit of a little bit out of left field for me, Pep. But um, I think uh, USF1 have to sign an experienced uh, racer as well to Next uh, one, help, yeah. help this young chap out. Absolutely. I mean, you, you have to have now someone who's got race experience, and, and not just from a few years ago, but actually 
get someone who's got recent race experience. I'm not saying Jack Villeneuve won't get the seat, Max, but someone who's he had won't. Grand Prix experience <laughs> in the last few years is what USF1 needs. Your, your thoughts on uh, Jose Maria Lopez uh, lasting at USF1 in the next two or three years, Pep? Probably, um, probably no. Probably no? Yeah, my guess is no. Uh, we'll see. The guy might have some good pace and, and blow everyone away, but I doubt it. Um, we'll have to see, mate. But, you know, even on paper, he doesn't. I, I can see lots of other candidates who would be probably a better young driver, especially yeah. Americans. There's a few Americans out there. There are. That's uh, the thing. Um, there's, there's quite a few out there who I think would be a better young driver. But um, there's Jose's a couple... got the cash, mate. He does. Guys. He has the cash-ish. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a lot of young, uh, well, not a lot, but there's uh, certainly a number of young American drivers in uh, in open wheeler uh, categories around the world at the moment, and I would have thought that that would have been a logical move from um, yeah. Peter and Kenny, but they've obviously shown faith in this young bloke, and I think that faith is worth about eight million bucks. Mm. So it comes as no real surprise, I guess, that uh, if you've got the uh, the cash on the table, mate, then um, you know for a fledgling team, you you're pretty much going to get a drive. So, but again, I just hope that the uh, USF1 choose an experienced driver as well and uh, and take the team forward. All right, Max, the other confirmation this week has been Jaime Agraswari finally confirmed at Toro Rosso. There were some rumours about Bruno Senna maybe joining the team if Campos fell over. And uh, you know what? I, I'm pleased for Jaime. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I've said in previous podcasts of giving drivers only half a year or a few Grand Prix. You know, Roman Grosjean is another example where the guy had, you know, the second half of the season and is now in the, pretty much the wilderness. So give Jaime a chance. He did well in his debut as far as I can see last year. So to me, that was that was always going to be confirmed. And I'm, I'm glad that it is, mate, for, for, for Jaime's sake. I think it's a, um, a big leap of faith from Franz Tost, uh, STR, to give the young guy another go around. Because let's face it, effectively... This guy hasn't seen half of, he hasn't raced on half of the circuits mm. uh, that he's going to race on this yeah. year. Now, admittedly, everyone has their simulators and the like, but that can never compensate for actual on-track performance. So I think it's a big leap of faith, and uh, and I wish Hamey all the best, uh, purely because I just like saying Hamey, and Al <laughs> I like saying that as well. So I, um, I wish the young, uh, young chap all the best. All right, mate, Salva has confirmed Pedro De La Rosa, who's been in the wilderness running around in test tracks since the early noughties, Max. If De La Rosa can get a drive in Formula 1, <laughs> so can I, all right? And I'm shit. You've all seen me on uh, PlayStation 3. I am stunned at this. Yeah, I posted a comment on the channel saying that I was a little bit perplexed as well, Max. Um, I understand why. Uh, Peter Salva did this. He's got a guy who's bringing a lot of McLaren know-how and experience and insight and knowledge, mate, uh, to the team. And also, he's you know obviously been in Formula One in the past. But, but Sauber are going back to Ferrari engines yeah. this year. I, I, I would have thought that Fissy Keller might have had a better shot at it, given that they had that Ferrari engine. But um, Pedro's come back, mate, and he's got a race seat with Sauber. And uh, hopefully, I'll be proved long wrong, at least for Pedro's sake, but I actually don't think that he's going to do much in that Sauber car. I just can't see the race pace coming from the guy. Even when he was in Formula 1, I, 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 he never really impressed me. I just thought he was really erratic. Mm. I mean, you know, he had these odd glimmers of, um, you know, raw speed, and I'm not going to take anything away from the guy, because he did. But I just found him really erratic. Mm. Um, and I'm very surprised that, that Sauber have signed him. He's come from left field as far as I'm concerned, but... Interesting to read his comments. Oh, I always knew I'd get back into Formula 1. Bullshit. <laughs> that's, that's the equivalent of me saying, oh, I always knew I'd grow, grow all my hair back. I mean, you're yeah, right. Um, yeah, so a bit of a surprise for me, Pet, having uh, Pedro uh, back on the grid. But Peter Sauber obviously knows what he's doing and sees some value in signing uh, Pedro. So we'll, we'll wait and see. All right, guys. Well, we've got three more race seats to, still to come. We've got Renault. We've got Campos. We've got um, USF1 still to come, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to do a couple more videos after this and talk about some of the other things that are going on in Formula 1, so stay tuned, guys. All right, see you soon. Okay, bye.